गुड इवनिंग वन एंड ऑल माई सेल्फ पी उषा शेटगर वालचंद इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी सोलापुर इन टूडे सेशन विल सी हाउ टू मेजर द इम्पेडेंस एट माइक्रोवेव फ्रिक्वेंसी दिस इज लर्निंग आउटकम एट द एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन स्टूडेंट विल बी एबल टू मेजर द इम्पेडेंस एट माइक्रोवेव फ्रिक्वेंसी दीज आर द कंटेंट्स Impedance can be measured by using two methods. First is using slotted line method, and second one is using reflectometer method. Before going to start today's session, you can pause video here and recall what is magic tea. Yes, the magic tea is one of the microwave component which can be formed by using. other two components that is e plane t and h plane t so combination of e plane t and h plane t forms magic t junction magic t one of the application of the magic t is used to measure the unknown impedance value now let us going to start today's session how to measure the impedance so impedance can be measured at microwave frequencies by using three methods first is using magic t which is already studied in last lecture second one using slotted line method and the third one is using reflectometer method now the measurement of impedance using the slotted line first method here the vmax and vmin value can be determined so one of the setup is used for this type of the method in this method we have to calculate the maximum value of the voltage and minimum value of the voltage here we can measure these two values by uh, two steps first is determine the vmin value that is the minimum value of the voltage using load impedance that is zl in second step determine the vmin value by short circuiting the load value that means the so, uh, load can be short circuited by using the short circuit so this is the setup number 1 for the slotted line method here the microwave source is used the microwave source is used to generate the uh, to apply the so, uh, supply to the microwave source then the attenuator is the attenuation can be measured by using this attenuator next it is given to the slotted line section the slotted line section can be connected to the crystal detector that is whatever is the output can be detected by using this crystal detector and it can be measured on power meter directly that means you getting the power reading directly by using this power meter this is one of the method to get the output otherwise you can connect the cro to observe the waveform of the generated signal now the unknown load is connected to the other port of the slotted line section so this is the setup number 1 which is used for slotted line method in setup 2 of slotted line method microwave source is connected after that attenuator and it is given to the slotted line section then from the slotted line crystal detector is used to detect the output which can be directly measured by using this power meter in previous uh, setup unknown load is connected to the slotted line then here the unknown load is shorted by using shorted termination termination is used to terminate that port so we are making the short at the output side so this is the setup number 2 for the slotted line section now by using this setup number 1 and setup number 2 we are checking the values of voltages at the maximum and minimum position now when we are trying to obtain these values of maximum and minimum voltages using the load we get a certain values however if the same can be done by using the short termination that is your short circuiting at the load side 
then the minimum of the voltage gets shifted it may get shifted either to the right side or to the left side of the original waveform now if we observe that whatever is the shift will be observed by short circuiting the load in that case if that shift is to the left side then we can consider the load is inductive and if that shift is towards the right side then the load can be considered as a capacitive in nature now the same will be observed by using this waveform you can say that this is setup one which having this waveform here the max value of the voltage can be considered and this is the minimum value of the voltage now here we can use the load initially for the setup one in setup two short termination is connected at the load side so whenever this block is added that is short termination is added in setup two to the slotted line in that case some minimum some shift will be observed in this minimum value so in the first figure here the this minimum value is shifted towards the left side so we have already uh, uh, discussed that if the shift is at the left side then the load is called as a inductive load inductive shift and here if this v minimum value is shifted towards the right side then you are getting the capacitive effect thus the output standing wave can be considered so slotted line by recording this data and uh, unknown impedance can be calculated by using this slotted line method so uh, the impedance and the reflection coefficient can be obtained in both magnitude as well as in phase whereas the reflection coefficient is nothing but how much amount of the wave is reflected back out of the incident wave can be defined with this reflection coefficient and the letter denoted with this row is nothing but the reflection coefficient now second method of the impedance is measurement is uh, the using reflectometer so using slot uh, unlike of the slotted line the reflectometer helps to find only the magnitude of the impedance here the phase angle cannot be calculated by using reflectometer method in this reflectometer method two directional couplers are used directional coupler can be uh, one of the microwave component which can be used to calculate uh, the impedance value by using reflectometer so two directional couplers are used which having the identical properties but these are differs in directions are taken now these two couplers are used to uh, used in sampling the incident power which is denoted with the pi and the reflected power pr from the load so directional coupler which having the uh, four ports actually one port is incident port from that power is incident at the another port the uh, power is received which can be denoted with the pr and the second third port which having the power is pf forward power and the fourth port is b pb that is back power so the directional coupler maintains actually uh, uh, the separation between the two ports any two ports that is if the number of uh, ports are four port 1 is coupled to port number 2 and 3 and not to 4 like that it will maintain the separation between the two ports it is used to obtain the magnitude of the reflection coefficient rho also from which the impedance can be calculated now this is the method of the impedance using reflectometer so which having the two directional coupler one directional coupler is the forward directional coupler which having the coupling factor is 20 decibel and the other one is reverse directional coupler which can be denoted with the pr it generates the pr reflected power and it generates the incident power pi so it is a forward detector and this is reverse detector now these two reverse uh, detector uh, uh, power received and the incident power this can be put in this formula to find out the rho value 
so rho is equal to under root reflected power divided by incident power it can be written as under root p r by 100 to p i by 100 so here from the reflectometer reading we have this reflection coefficient as the ratio of reflected power to the under root reflected power to the incident power. So from this value rho can be calculated and also from this rho VSWR that is standing voltage standing wave ratio also calculated and the impedance can be calculated by Z minus ZG upon Z plus ZG equal to rho and rho value is known from that we can calculate the standing wave ratio where z g is the unknown known wave impedance and z is the unknown value though the forward and reverse wave parameters are observed here there will be no interference because of the directional property of the directional coupler and the attenuator helps in maintaining the low input power these are the references used for today's session. Thank you.